Good morning. Happy Thursday. I have neuro coffee in hand and it is perfect. Hey, Bill. Um, I was wondering, uh, I saw you posted on the forum uh, something about um, looking at the toes to yes. get in a sense of whether somebody is uh, at end game uh, wide or narrow. Uh, can yeah. you expand on that more? Like, so yeah. what else do we see on the, in the toes what, between these two uh, representations? All right. So, um, so you got to think about uh, some of the toe muscles. So you've got long flexors underneath the the foot. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you've got these short extensors on top of the foot. So if I was going to make a claw like that, that would be concentric orientation here, concentric orientation there, right? But they're different. So these are the long flexors here, short extensors there. You see it? Okay. So let me pull up a let me pull up a picture for everyone. Can everybody see that? That's somebody holding on for dear life, okay? So, so that's what I'm talking about. So the, so the muscles on the bottom of the foot are concentrically oriented. The muscles on top of the foot are concentrically oriented. You see that? So that means I have compression on the bottom of the foot and I have compression on top of the foot. Just like, hey, if I had compression on the front side of the body and compression on the back side of the body. So if I was squeezing you front to back, so let's just say that you're, you're an end game, compensatory strategy, exhalation, everything is squeezing the bejesus out of you. This is what the foot would look like. So this is a foot that is trying to get to um, the end. So they're trying to get to late propulsion, but the center of gravity is still back far enough that the heel stays on the ground. So normally in, in a late propulsive strategy, the heel would be off the ground and you would be up on the forefoot. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. But if my heel stays down, right, the muscles that would lift the heel up can't lift the heel up because it's too heavy. So they grab the toes, which are lighter, and they pull the toes back. That's what you're looking at. Mm. So this is an easy way, it's like, like literally, let me see your bare feet and they're standing up and you see toes that look like this on the ground, late propulsion. A, 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 a single arm uh, supine press? Uh-huh. I, I thought that it was producing a turn, but it's not, right? Because your back's on the ground. Uh, so this is going to be one of those independent things, right? Okay. okay, okay. All right, so um, if, we, if we imply a press, mm -hmm. so our intention is high force production, <clears throat> okay? So high force production would imply that I'm going to create a rather significant compressive strategy, okay? Which means, so if you think about it, if you were setting up like a, like a bilateral symmetrical kind of a press of, of any kind, right? Um, you would wanna be as, as you know, fixed as possible, as stable as possible, which would imply that you're gonna squeeze, right? So I'm gonna press, if I'm on my back, if I'm in, it's like in supine and I'm pressing, then I'm gonna press my scaps into whatever surface that I'm on. I'm gonna try to compress dorsal rostral. I'm gonna try to, uh, the load if I'm pressing is gonna compress me anteriorly. And so I'm gonna minimize turn. Even if I do that with one arm, if I, if I up the load sufficiently, I will still compress. Cause I was thinking of the, um, the, the lateral rolling and stuff like that. And um, yeah, so I try to incorporate, like if I reach and press and okay, not hang heavy. On, okay. Hang on, hang on, mm -hmm. hang on, hang on. Let's not, let's not create a confusion of terms here, bud. So, mm -hmm. so when you say reach and press, now you've created mm -hmm. a, an element of confusion in terminology. Mm -hmm. If, if I, if I drive the, so if I, if I'm using one arm and I'm driving the, the if I'm pushing the scapula away from the surface, mm -hmm. all right. Where I, where I literally am pushing the scapula into the thorax to create the turn. Now I'm, I'm, I'm implying more of a reaching activity, mm -hmm. which will create a turn, 
right? But it's also going to reduce the force production. That's one of the that's one of the ways that we distinguish the the, the turning capabilities in, as far as an activity of, that we would select in, in the gym. Mm -hmm. It's like if we're trying to create a turn, right? I, I want to imply that it's going to be more of a, a, a reach oriented activity, meaning that I'm going to I'm going to try to advance that side mm -hmm. of the axial skeleton. Whereas if I am pressing, I am not advancing the axial skeleton. You just yeah, you just mm -hmm. you, you, okay. you see the difference. So the two terms, okay, I see, I see. Press and reach. Again, I, right. I I try to distinguish. Like we need some way to distinguish between the two representations because the implication that anytime my arm goes forward is a press is a little misleading. Like what is the relative load and how hard is it? So mm -hmm. if you're trying to restore movement on somebody with max effort loads. Good luck, mm -hmm. right? Because it can't happen. Because at some point in time, I have to. I have to. I, even if I'm not on the loaded side, look, Grace, you're back. Air quotes. Um, so even on the unloaded side, if the if the the threshold of effort is high enough, I will compress. Mm -hmm. Right. If if we're talking about a here you go, Dwight. If we're talking about a major league pitcher throwing a baseball at at the point of maximum efforts. They compress both sides of their body, not just the baseball side, mm -hmm. because they have to stop movement, right? Mm -hmm. So the higher the force production, the less movement is, is physically possible. All right, so I have a question uh, that relates to front foot elevated split squat versus rear foot elevated yep. split squat. Yep. I'm not totally sure when would be an appropriate moment to use the rear foot elevated split squat. Uh huh. Curious if you could describe an instance or a client presentation yep. that would warrant a rear foot elevated split squat. Yep. And why uh, you would choose that. Yeah. Okay. So so let's talk about a split squat in general first. Mm -hmm. Okay. The typical weight distribution, um, and this is the, the, so there is a there is a, a study um, that you can find on the um, split squat as to the weight distribution on the feet. And again, take it with a grain of salt because it, you can manipulate it, okay? But we're gonna speak generally. Typically, what you're gonna get as far as a distribution goes is a slightly higher load on the front foot than the back foot. And so um, if we're gonna talk percentages, we're gonna say for the sake of discussion, it's 55% on the front foot, 45% on the back foot, okay? So it's not even, it's just a little bit of bias towards the front foot, got it? Got it, okay. So if I pick up the back foot, and again, I think this is, I think my numbers are accurate, but but don't quote me here until you read this, this study yourself. I think that the highest load that they got on the front foot by elevating the rear foot on a bench, so like the classical Bulgarian split squat um, level, right? Um, I think it was like 85 front foot, 25 back foot. And so, so, by, by flip-flopping the, the foot orientation, you're just manipulating force, okay? You're manipulating the load that is required to overcome, okay? So um, when I throw the front foot up, my intention is to reduce the load on the front leg, okay? Why would I wanna do that? Because what I may have is a behavior in regards to that front foot that I do not want or, or I'm having trouble managing. So case in point, I have somebody that I'm trying to take from early propulsion. So I've been doing heels elevated stuff and I've got this, this nice posterior expansion now. And now I wanna transition them through middle with an element of tibial control. So if I need to reduce the forces on the front foot to teach them how to manage the tibia over the foot. So you've heard me talk about about how that foot translates over or the tibia translates over the foot and how the arch influences how fast that tibia travels over the foot. If I need more control, I wanna take the weight away, the load on the front foot, so I can teach them how to translate the tibia over with, with, with an element of control so they don't accelerate too far. So they don't hit, hit the, the, the max P too, too soon, right? Okay. So I'm teaching them a, a control element. So that's a flat foot, front foot elevated split squat. 
Okay, so I would use that as I'm I'm reintroducing this middle propulsive phase. All right now, so let's think about how would you intensify that process. So I got a guy that's got great control now with the front foot elevated. What would be the next thing to do to make it just a little bit harder, but but maintain the same circumstance of of controlling tibial translation? I'm asking you a question. Dropping that front foot a little bit. Yeah, so we put it on the floor. So instead of putting on a six inch box, now it's on the floor. So what did I do? I just put greater load through the front foot. Now he's got to manage that. So it's just like putting weight on the bar. It's just another way to create a <coughs> progression in the exercise itself. Okay, so once he's good at that, then what do I do? Elevate back foot. There you go, you see? So you, you've already answered your own question. You see the difference? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's very simple when you, when you look at it that way, you go, oh, well, that makes total sense now, right? And then you've got any number of variations on a theme as to what you can do in regards to the, the, the movement velocity, right? Load, I can, I can throw my offsets on there. So I can capture a lot of things, right? And manipulate this, this one activity in many different ways to accomplish many different tasks. And I can create these little micro progressions where, yeah, it's the same activity, but today it's just going to be a little bit harder than it was last.